Okay, we're coming up on our uh, moon landing fairly shortly. Um, it can be kind of challenging to do a precision uh, landing on the moon compared to, say, Minmus. Minmus, you can really, you know, land on a dime. Well, not on a dime, but, but very close to wherever it is that you're aiming for. On the moon, it's a little bit more tough. Uh, you get a little bit less. Gravity gives you a little less leeway than it would, does on Minmus. So we'll see what we can do here. Okay. Cutting it a trifle close there. Let's start. We might not land in that crater. Or then again, we might. Gear down. I'm going to kick up just a little bit uh, my apogee because um, that's going to help me a little bit in terms of getting where I want to be. It also helps me not smash into the surface of the moon when we I'm doing all my maneuvers here. That also helps. <laughs> All right, let's switch to our outside view here. The I look like I'm, uh, I'm kind of fussing on getting on right, right, exact spot. It's because. Um, uh, every every ounce you deflect from true vertical at this point, uh, you're going to add in some uh, horizontal motion, and I don't want to do that. Okay, 8,000 meters. Um, I probably ought to assume that the uh, altitude here is about 2,000 meters, just to be on the safe side. So I don't want to kill off too much because it'll take forever to get to the surface, and I'm going to waste some fuel. Uh, but as you see, I've got lots of fuel. I got uh, got plenty of fuel to get the small lander to the ground. All right, we're gonna free fall for a little bit. And we're bearing in mind that the, that we're assuming that the um, uh, surface is about two thousand meters. Above, uh, or surface above, about 2,000 meters above, it's not sea level because it's the moon, but above the median level or whatever the, the altimeter goes by. Uh, that's not how far, far, far up we are. We're probably 3,000 meters up. At this point, if I have to, say, say I see the, the ground coming up pretty sudden-like, uh, I can kill a lot of velocity uh, pretty quickly with this uh, aerospike engine, uh, so I'm not terribly worried. Okay, I'm guessing we have about a thousand meters at most uh, left to fall. Uh, it looks like I may be getting some texture. Hard to tell. The moon is a hard surface to land on because it's all kind of dark and gray and not a lot of contrast. All right, yeah, we're getting texture now. And looks like 
we get a little bit of drift. How much? Oh, we keep that. Alright, let's fall again. It's, we're pretty much straight up here. We don't have a whole lot of drift. Not a, not a lot. We can judge it better when we get closer to the ground. Nah, we're good. No worries. Piece of cake. Okay, yeah, I do see a little drift. Eh, no, no. Stop playing pogo stick and get this thing on the ground. Yeah, if there's drift, it's not a whole lot. Looks like there's a bit of an incline, not a lot. my shadow. There's my shadow. And touchdown. SAS off. Clap yourself on the back, Guinnessy. You've landed on the moon for the second time this day. In two different bodies. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go for the Olivier. Oh, nope, shy. There you go. There we go. Oh, okay. Yay, I'm on the moon! He's a happy camper. Okay, let's dig up some rocks, do a little science here, and then we'll do the return journey. I wanted to show you this right quick. Um, it's not the worst incline I've ever landed on. I've landed on much worse, but um, that's a bit of an incline there. So, But um, it's got a fairly wide stance, so it wasn't a problem. And if those land landing legs had broken off, they'd just land on the tank, probably. Okay, Guinnessy, we've done enough science now. Let's go ahead and head it on home. Head back to Kerbin, and a hero's welcome. Back in you go. And lift off. Okay, and we're heading on a nine degree angle. Well, the, oh, there's Kerbin Rise. Look. Very picturesque. And one of the cool things, about, if you, you may have uh, seen, I think it was the. Uh, was it Apollo 17 where that they filmed the lift off from the lunar surface? Uh, well, they they did their gravity turn like almost straight away, and uh, that's because the the, the uh, gravity on the moon is so much less than um, than on the Earth. Uh, they don't have to wait to build up speed too much; they just go straight into it. That's pretty much what I'm doing here. 
Also, there's no atmosphere to slow me down, so... Okay, uh, we're about to enter the atmosphere, and as you can see, we still have over a third of a tank left, of these tanks left. That, that's um, uh, almost almost 300 units uh, each. So we probably could have put a uh, three-man three unit on, on here if we wanted to. Uh, but that's just, um, it's just, all this is to show you that you don't need a giant moon rocket to get to the moon. This is not, Kerbin is not like Earth. The gravity is much less, and so... Um, Oh, I better jettison my parts. Hold on. I'm busy talking. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, move a little bit. There we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jettison that part. And let's get ready for re-entry. Oh. And hope these parts don't hit us. And I hope it doesn't kick me back out in door, but that would suck. <laughs> But even if it did, uh, eventually air breaking would uh, bring me back in, uh, to, uh, to Kerbin. Okay, we're at uh, 25,000 meters and we're still going like a bat out of hell. Uh, 1,400 meters per second. But um, once we get a little bit lower, I think the air is going to bite in. And this parachute is uh, very strong compared to the size of this capsule, so I believe it will be okay. And Guinnessy's happy. Guinnessy? Jeansy? What the hell is your name, dude? Uh, I see a ground texture. I hope we're not landing in high altitudes. That would bite. I see a ground texture. Open up, damn it! Oh! Open up! Ah, oh, okay. There we go. I thought we were going to smash into the planet there for a second. One thing you have to be careful about the parachutes, if you put a lot of parachutes on a capsule, like way more than it actually needs, uh, it can actually bring it to a dead stop. And when that, that happens, um, uh, the, uh, the parachute figures that its job is done, and it lets go, <laughs> Pl plummeting your Kerbal Knots to their death. Uh, so um, uh, just bear in mind that uh, having too many parachutes can almost be as bad as having too few. Because if it actually, that actually goes to zero meters a second before it hits the ground, It'll hit the ground, but it'll hit the ground real hard. So, something to be aware of. Alright, come on out, Guinness. You take a bow. Job well done. You did good. Okay, well that's our um, uh, video for today. Um, just um, uh, bear in mind that um, if you design your rocket smart, you don't actually have to have a very big moon rocket, uh, and um, uh, you can carry a lot of um, a lot of uh, weight um, or a lot of people payload uh, without that big of a rocket. Even if you don't use the the fuselage, um, you, there's ways that you can make the most out of your your fuel tanks and, and engines. Um, one thing to do is um, uh, all the engines you have. Well, first of all, don't have don't have six stages, and each stage has an engine. Um, if you have a, uh, a number of engines, you might as well fire them all at once. <laughs> More boosters. Uh, you know, if you're if you're using if you're carrying carrying rockets or engines that you're not actually using, that's just dead weight. Good job, Guinnessy. All right, until next time.